G'day Bambies, Kaleido here and welcome to another Tiny Homes build in The Sims 4. So this one is heavily inspired by the old nursery rhyme called The Old Woman in Who Lived in a Shoe or something like that. So the other day I just randomly remembered this nursery rhyme and it's a real old one and it's kind of odd. It's quite short and when I was little, it used to confuse me a little bit uh, because I used to see the picture. It was a very intriguing picture, a little old lady and then this giant shoe, but it was run amok by all of these children. So those children hanging out of the windows, just hanging out of the doors, running around outside. I just thought it was like such an amazing image and it really kind of stuck in my head uh, from a young age, but I will read you guys the actual nursery rhyme. It's kind of outdated and yeah, I just want to warn you, it's a little bit, <laughs> a bit old, okay? So the ending of it's a little bit like, oh gosh, okay, I'm just going to get into it. So there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread, then whipped them all soundly and put them to bed. So the ending of that, obviously, no one really does that anymore. <laughs> it's like she whipped her children. It sounds very British. I have a feeling like this is a British nursery rhyme and Australia like kind of has that influence because even my dad, my dad considers, considers himself British because when he joined the army, he like swore allegiance to the queen and he was telling me this the other day and he was like, I'm British. I was like, okay, dad. All right. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that's an interesting nursery rhyme anyways. And I thought, how about let's try to rebuild this in The Sims 4. And I used to think when I was little, like how on earth are all of these children living in this tiny home? Like it may be a giant shoe, but it's a tiny home. So like it's going to be squeezy in there, right? So when you really think about it, this possibly could be my very first time ever that I thought about a tiny home and I was like oh well possibly um that I was trying to like think in my head how would that actually work where would all of the children sleep well unfortunately I figured out pretty quickly that there were only going to be two bedrooms in this house but I still had a lot of fun making something inspired by a nursery rhyme. So please let me know down below if you guys remember this nursery rhyme or if you've never heard of it before. I have a twinge, like a feeling that it is a British nursery rhyme. I don't know why, it kind of has like that a dark humor sort of that reminds me of something like British humor so I'm not sure but if you guys from America let me know if you remember this one uh and also let me know if there's any other nursery rhymes that you want me to maybe try to recreate as a tiny home I think that would be kind of fun and I really really did enjoy this one it was kind of magical you know it's a giant shoe and all and although I wasn't able to actually make it look totally like a shoe I think I did all right especially with the new rounded roofs that we have and I could kind of manipulate them a little bit more I really tried to give it that shoe kind of laced feeling at the front top part. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but like the top of the shoe where the laces are. I really tried to make that happen, but it just, to me, it still looks like a roof. It doesn't look like a shoe, but I tried, all right? I tried. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it was an interesting shape. It's basically a rectangle with some squares on top, but I do change it up in a little bit to be a little bit more different and recently I just re-watched Howl's Moving Castle so that is one of my favorite favorite movies of all time um, by Studio Ghibli and uh, I just love that whole whimsical magical style and I guess I kind of was inspired by that also when I was building this I was thinking of those sorts of vibes and 
Yeah, I just, oh man, I'm really, really happy with this tiny house. Like, I know I always say, like, this one's my favorite, but I actually honestly think this is one of my favorites. I, I loved the whole nursery theme, or well, nursery rhyme theme, and I'm excited to read the comments and see if you guys have any cool suggestions. Like, I was even thinking maybe we should try to create, um, like, Snow White's house you know when she goes to the seven dwarves home or maybe we could make um what is it the three little bears or whatever when the girl goes in goldilocks goes in and she like um drinks from the soup and sleeps in the beds and stuff we could try to recreate that that would be really awesome oh my gosh i'm having so many ideas i can't wait but yeah let me know down below in the comments if you have any suggestions uh do you guys when you were little this is just a random thought whenever they would read out nursery rhymes and stuff they would really stick in my head and this is like a really young thought that I'm remembering um where I would literally like I would be so mesmerized by these stories that I would have dreams about them and they would get warped a little bit but <laughs> I know this is going down a weird uh route isn't it but anyways I would just really really be so intrigued by this story to the point where it bothered me because I'd be trying to figure out all of the little things just like I was trying to figure out with this one with the old woman in the shoe like why does she have so many children and why does she live in a giant shoe where did the shoe come from and when I was a kid I was like okay the shoe must be from one of the giants in Jack and the Beanstalk you know how like Jack and the Beanstalk there's the giants, I thought that maybe one of them like died or something and left a shoe behind and she was like, hey, this looks like a good home. <laughs> and I don't know where she got all the children from. Um, I don't know. That was like the one thing I it would always make me like, what? How does an old lady have all of these children? And oh, that is my phone. Oopsie. Gonna silence that for a tad. <laughs> but yeah, what do you guys reckon is the like the best theory towards where she got this home and why this lady had so many children? Do you think it was something a little bit more morbid? I have heard in the past uh, someone say like, uh, you know, like chicken pox or smallpox or something may have wiped out all of their parents. And this old lady was kind of looking after the children of the town who were left behind. I know that sounds really sad, but like stuff like that used to happen. And a lot of old nursery rhymes are kind of morbid, like very grim in a way. Like um, ring a ring a ring a rosy. I forgot that one almost. Ring a ring a rosy, a pocket full of posies. That one is like really kind of scary too. <laughs> Oh, some of them had like really scary meanings and as a kid I would just like sing them and stuff. I yeah, I don't know why parents don't stop us. Like what? These are such old nursery rhymes or little songs and they actually have kind of scary meanings, but when you really kind of look into the background of what the old lady in the house could mean, I don't know. Did she abduct them? Was she like a witch? Did she like, oh my god, that's so scary. What if she was like a little witch? And she stole all of the children. And that's why she would whip them and put them to bed early. Oh my god, I think we've figured it out. <laughs> oh, probably not. I, I have a feeling that's something to do with like maybe some sort of epidemic. And then she had to look after all of the children left behind. That's probably a little bit more realistic. But she could have been a witch too. She could have been a witch. Who lives in a shoe, right? Who lives in a shoe? Um, but yeah, this is like the the biggest questions in the universe. Why did the old woman live in a shoe? Somebody tell me. <laughs> oh, golly gosh. So we're basically done on the exterior of the home. I've added so much greenery, flowers, and stuff like that. We have obviously the new expansion pack, Cats and Dogs, which is just so much fun to play around with 
We have all of these new items and stuff. So uh, I do put a lot of plants later and trees and stuff that are from the expansion. We're also building this home in Brindle Tempe. And I have one qualm to complain about. So I moved this house around two, three to three different lots in Brindle Tempe because Every time I tried to save it to my gallery, there's so many trees around some of these lots that when you take the photos, like when it automatically takes the photos to put in your gallery, it, it just takes a photo of the trees. Like you can't even see the house, it's just the tree in the way of the camera. It's the most frustrating thing. And I know there is a way to try to combat that, but I'm very lazy and I don't know things. I remember Hatsy tried to explain it to me and it just went through my ears. I'm the worst reader and listener person ever. I'll have to go back and read those messages and try to figure it out because I really want to be able to build on some of these other lots we have in Brindleton Bay. But for some reason, whenever I try to save the image, it just like takes a picture of a tree. I'm just like, really? Really now? So we do have one bathroom in this house. We have a very cozy little dining slash kitchen, which is very, very tiny. And also we have a entertainment room. So we have a chess table um, and we also put in a TV. Lots of little sitting spots. Well, we have one little lounge and an armchair and I put in a bunch of tables and stuff. And I did make sure to have a sim come in and test everything out so um i am going to try to start doing that more often because i don't want to be uploading builds onto the gallery and then you guys won't be actually able to use them so uh yeah just so you know this one's actually been tested which is fantastic and I have been behind with uploading stuff onto the gallery. So a few of you guys have been asking for stuff recently. I think it was the 8 Sim Tiny Home. Uh, I'm going to be putting that up soon. And I think what I'll do is actually upload them to the gallery um, before the video goes up because uh, that way I won't, it will be less likely for me to forget because I think what happens is I upload it and then I... I think that it's all done. I think that, oh yeah, that's all done now. I don't need to go back and then I forget to put it up. And you guys obviously get a little bit frustrated with that, which is understandable. And I apologize because I do usually say in a video, yeah, yeah, I'm going to have this on the gallery. And then I don't put it up and I feel bad. I'm sorry. I'm really, I'm a mess. I'm totally a mess. <laughs> So we kind of go with the natural kind of green themes and kind of oldish, very English kind of vibe I get in here um, throughout the whole house, just because that's how I feel. Like when I read the nursery rhyme again, and when I remembered the nursery rhyme, this is sort of the vibes I get off it. Like I don't think, like she's an old woman. I don't think the inside of a house is going to be like, contemporary or anything modern at all so we kind of go with a lot of old things here and there lots of strange paintings and clutter and things like that too so it was fun and it is different it is nice to uh, build something a lot different to what I usually do in these tiny homes and the outside was a lot of fun to do so I'll be getting to some more of the landscaping later on I'm usually try to put I usually try to put in a lot more effort when it comes to landscaping, but I feel like recently I've gotten quite lazy with it and I've been focusing more on the immediate exterior of the house, so the actual exterior, not the landscaping, and the interior is where I put most of my focus and I have been like in the past I used to put in so much effort into landscaping even in the sims 2 like I used to do so much landscaping I wish that I recorded and uploaded to YouTube back then that would have been so awesome um but no sadly my computer was really bad and I didn't have internet back then <laughs> yeah I didn't have internet for so long when I was little I used to have to ride my bike to the library to get internet like, and the library was quite far from my house. Like, we would, I'd have to ride all the way down the hill, across the highway. Yeah, 
That was it. Mm. <laughs> that was my only internet for so many years until when, like I was in grade eight or nine or something when we properly got internet. So dreadful, right? I know. I, I don't know how I lived. Like, I feel like I grew up in the Stone Age compared to some people. Oh, dearie me. So I went really, really simple with the bathroom. It is the most basic bathroom ever. I know. I just, I can't with bathrooms, guys. I literally, I just, I don't even care about them. They're just like a functionality. Like, you, there's something you have to have in The Sims. I wish you didn't have to have a toilet. I wish you didn't. Well, I, okay. Having a bath is fine, especially with cats and dogs, because then you can go ahead and bath your doggies, your fur babies, and it's adorable. And when you have a toddler, that's adorable when they have a bubble bath and stuff. So, okay, that's cute in a bathroom. Those are the only fun interactions that you have in a bathroom, but everything else is just like, ugh, why do I have to remember this? I'll... <laughs> And that's why it's so notorious. It happens in a lot of my games where my Sims are either, um, either they pee themselves or they nearly pee themselves constantly. I just, I always forget about their bathroom needs. I'm so bad. So we do have one single bedroom and then on the very top floor we have a, a master bedroom, which is quite nice. Obviously, a whole bunch of children would not be able to live here. I don't know where they would sleep. They literally, like, I guess 10 of them would sleep all in one bed. And you know what? People used to actually co-sleep a lot. Uh, a lot of people around the world still do co-sleep. When I was little, um, my mom co-slept in the same bed as my little sister. I didn't. My brother and I didn't. Only if we were, like, traveling somewhere else. Um, like when I was in the Philippines, but, um, not really like people don't do it as much anymore. But anyways, I think, I guess we'll just go with the story. All of the children co-sleep in the top bed and somehow in the single bed, <laughs> maybe they'll sleep on the floor too. They pull out some blankets and mattresses out of the cupboard. I seriously don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> It was just a random thought, right? It was just a random thought. And I thought I was going to be able to fit a lot more in. But as soon as I started building the shape of the house, I was like, I could try to fit in eight bedrooms, but it will not look good. So, and plus this is a tiny home. So I wanted to make it really, really tiny and sweet and cute for you guys. And I think I did exactly that. I'm really happy with it. And oh my God, bless that downward like sizing tool oh my god i'm so thankful that they've updated that some of you guys are like we've always had that no 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 we haven't always had that it was only if you had already sized it up you could size it back down to original but um to its original size but you couldn't size it down any more less than its original size now you can which is so great because there's so many things that you we've been needing that tool for like a lot of rugs a lot of paintings that are just too gigantic to even use in a normal home so it was really really awesome and the thing is with this downsizer tool um is that when you do it with paintings usually when you size a painting up it'll kind of lose its quality or get pixelated and have all of these artifacts across it but when you size them down they kind of get a little bit sharper the image and I really really like that so even when you make things petite it actually works out really really well while sometimes when you're trying to size things up it, it goes a bit wonky and doesn't look as great uh, but yeah so many items I used in this house are from the new expansion I just love so many of the new build items I think they're really, really great and they're just so much fun, especially to decorate a older style home, which I feel like we've been needing. We got a lot of older style stuff in the vampires pack, but it was a little bit more gothic, um, neoclassical, I want to say. I possibly don't even know what that word means, but uh, really uh, they, they were a bit more gothic themed and it's more country and casual with cats and dogs which I like and it does give a old countryside vibe to the home which I just really really think adds to the whole nursery theme of the whole place.
Speaking of the new expansion pack, I have been playing a new Let's Play recently called Wolfgang. I've been having a lot of fun with it. We have the cutest little family. They're a little bit dysfunctional, but they're so sweet. So if you guys want to make sure that like, you check that out if you haven't already, I'll make sure to leave a link of that down below. Uh, it has nothing to do with this build, but I just thought as we've been raving on so much about the Cats and Dogs expansion pack, and if you guys are excited and seeing more aspects of that expansion, uh, you can always go and check out that series because I am going to be exploring more aspects of the pack playing that gorgeous little family. They're really, really sweet. They're single mom, although the dad, for some reason, basically lives at the house. He's, he doesn't even live there. He just, he just hangs out and cleans. It's really odd. We appreciate his help though. Like we appreciate the cleaning and looking after the toddler. Uh, we do have two kids by the way, which is really cool. But the, but the coolest part of this Let's Play is that we have uh, one, two, wait, Millie, Sassy, Bentley, um, Frida, and wait, 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 did I forget one? Oh, and Sergeant. So we have five animals. So Sergeant is the only cat. Sassy is a, uh, a not a Ridgeback, what are they called? Irish Wolfhound. And uh, Bentley is a little mixed white fluffy dog. And then we got Millie the fox. And Frida is a little fox terrier. She's really, really sweet too. She's got a big personality though. Um, yeah, they are so, so much fun. And it's a bit of a crazy household, but we're up to episode three and things are starting to kind of level out. The first two episodes were like, whoa, this is actually kind of hard trying to look after a toddler and five animals that are all not trained at all. Um, but we're up to episode three and they're starting to all be a little bit more manageable because we've got them kind of learning stuff. Like that some of them aren't barking all of the time, which wakes up your Sims, obviously. It's the most annoying thing ever. Uh, and also they've all learned how to pee outside. Thank goodness, that was hell. Um, yeah, I won't give away too much more. That is up to you guys if you wanna go and check that out. But yeah, I really, really love that family. They're so, so sweet. So this house is coming together. We're all done on the inside. As you can tell, I have added a bunch of stuff on the outside. We got little awnings. Um, the very top level kind of hangs over the bottom a little bit. And although the actual house House, like the shoe itself doesn't do this in the images that I found online. I just feel like it gave it more of a whimsical vibe. And also, as I said earlier, like I've I recently watched House Moving Castle and I just felt like it needed a little bit more. Uh, so here you can see that I've gone ahead and moved the house to another lot in Brindleton Bay. We have the ocean behind us. It's so gorgeous. Uh, and I had moved, this was actually the th the second time I'd moved it, so the third lot that I tried it on. Yeah, this is the only lot that didn't have a tree in the photograph, so that's great. Yay! Oh uh, yeah, guys, that is it for this video. Here are all of the screenshots. I'm just so happy with this build, honestly. It was so much fun. And if you guys have any suggestions of any other nursery rhyme themed builds or maybe like old fairy tale builds that you would like me to maybe try to attempt. I don't know. We'll see how we go. I would love to read your suggestions down below in the comment section. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you all have a fantastic day. I love you all two bits and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Thank you.